Welcome to a Code Report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem C from Code Forces round 487 entitled A Mist of Fluorescence. The problem states there are four kinds of flowers in the woods, amaranths, begonias, centaurias, and dianthuses. The woods can be represented by a rectangular grid of n rows and m columns. In each cell of the grid, there is exactly one type of flower. According to Mino, the number of connected components formed by each kind of flower are a, b, c, and d respectively. Two cells are considered in the same connected component if and only if a path exists between them that moves between cells sharing common edges and passes only through cells containing the same flowers. You are to help Mino depict such a grid of flowers with N and M arbitrarily chosen under the constraints given below. It can be shown that at least one solution exists under constraints of this problem. And note the problems highlighting that you are the one choosing the arbitrary N and M for the rows and columns of the grid. It's not given in the input. And the constraints for this problem are that there are going to be at most uh, 100 com connected components for each one of the flowers. And uh, the maximum uh, length or height of the rows and columns is going to be uh, 50. So let's take a look at a, some examples and some valid solutions to this problem. So. Uh, imagine that we're given A, B, C, and D equal to 1, 1, and 1, uh, 1, 1, 1, and 1. So each of the types of flowers uh, are only going to have one connected component in your grid. Uh, so one valid solution would be to choose a, a grid with four columns in one row, and uh, any way you arrange these, it's going to be valid because there are four connected components. Uh, there's only uh, you know, one red area, one green area, one blue area, and one yellow area. So another valid solution uh, would be the Microsoft logo. Uh, and another valid solution would be having a four by two grid where each of the uh, columns has the same uh, type of flower. So even though we have eight cells here, we still only have four connected components, one of each color. Uh, so if we were to make this a bit more complicated, uh, we, this would be another solution. So we could have uh, another connected component for A, but this still only makes one connected component. So we still have one connected component for each flower. If we change our example from 1, 1, 1, 1 to 2, 2, 2, 2, uh, a valid solution would be something like this. So you can see here that we've got two connected components for each flower. So here are the two for B, here are the two for A, and for C and D as well. So hopefully by now you get the idea of the problem. It's basically just giving us these four values for A, B, C, and D, and then asking us to construct a grid that satisfies the number of connected components for these given values. And you can uh, construct it however you want. Um, so there are many different algorithms that you could use to solve this problem. Uh, I'm just going to show one in this solution. So uh, the key thing to note here is the inputs of this problem. So uh, the constraints here are that A, B, C, and D, uh, the number of connected components for each flower is not going to be greater than 100, uh, but the values for the uh, length of our rows and depth of our uh, columns is going to be 50. So that means that we can have a, a grid with up to 2,500, 50 rows times 50 columns uh, uh, elements. And if we divide that by the number of flowers, that gives us uh, 625. So that means we have for uh, each flower 625 cells. Uh, in order to create a hundred different connected components and each connected component as you can see here only really has to be uh, one element so the algorithm that we're going to use is basically going to uh, divvy up a 48 by 50 grid so here I'm just showing uh, 12 by 12 but you can imagine that for each color you've got instead of three rows you've got 12 rows and instead of 12 columns you've got 50 columns and so we're gonna uh, in groups of 12 color all of these one color red green uh, blue and yellow and then uh, for all the excess uh, so that gives us one connected component to start and then we're just gonna uh, paint in these middle uh, cells with a different color so for red uh, we're gonna use yellow for green we're gonna use red blue we're gonna use green and yellow we're gonna use blue and so this is what a 2222 uh, generated grid would look like using our algorithm and if we were to change this to 4433 you can see here that for red and for green we have four connected components the main one that contains another color plus the three in a different color and uh, so on and so forth for the other colors so it's actually a pretty straightforward algorithm 
Um, and it's due to the fact that we know that M and N can be up to 50, which gives us a huge number of cells to work with, even though we need to only create a hundred connected components. Uh, so that's our algorithm. Let's take a look at the code. Here is our main function, construct flower woods. It takes four integers as parameters, A, B, C, and D, which represent the number of connected components uh, that we need to create in our grid. And it's a pretty simple function, so it just makes calls to other small functions. On our first line, we are going to get the initial grid, which has, uh, in groups of 12 rows, uh, the different uh, types of flowers. So the first 12 rows will be flower A, the second 12 rows will be flower B, uh, etc. And then we're going to make four different calls to our function scatter fill, which is going to fill each of those 12 rows with a different color flower. Uh, and each element that gets filled with a different flower will be two rows and two columns apart, as we showed in the visual explanation. And then once we've done this for each of the four different types of flowers, we're just going to print out our grid. So let's take a look at our initial grid function. So this is our initial grid function. Note that we're using uh, deduced auto function return type. Uh, you need to be compiling with the C++14 uh, compiler in order for this to compile. And at the top here, we're just declaring a raw array of flowers, uh, which are represented by characters A, B, C, and D. Then we construct our uh, 2D vector of characters, which is going to be our grid. And then we're going to loop through uh, for four groups, 12 rows at a time, and fill this grid with the uh, different characters A, B, C, and D, and then return the grid. And note that uh, because uh, we are uh, constructing this grid, uh, the copulation is going to take place specifically named return value optimization, so we don't need to worry about uh, a copy taking place here. It'll be elided. So looking at our next function, scatter fill, uh, this is a pretty simple function. It takes as parameters uh, reference to the grid that we're filling, uh, the count of the number of uh, connected components. And note that in our main function, we did a minus one to each of the counts because we've already created one connected component with the initial grid. So we only need to do uh, you know, x minus one of the uh, parameters that were initially passed to our main function, the letter that we're filling at this point in time, and the row we're starting from. And uh, we're going to start with column one. And then while we have a connected component to create, we are going to fill one of the elements at row column uh, with the given letter that we're currently filling. And then we just do a plus equals two to skip two columns over. And if any point our columns go above 49, we skip down two rows and reset our column to zero. So pretty straightforward. And our last function is just a boilerplate print function. Uh, the only thing different about any other boilerplate print function is at the top of this one, we need to print the number of column, the number of rows and the number of columns, which is going to be 48 and 50 all the time for this algorithm. So that's our whole algorithm. And uh, the last thing to talk about is the time complexity, which is actually going to be constant for this problem because uh, A, B, C, and D do not impact the runtime of our problem. It's always going to be the same. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contest start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.